Possible shots fired at Stoneman Douglas High School. This morning, chilling images and 911 calls from the Parkland Massacre, painting a timeline of terror. 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz seen here loading an AR-15 in the hallway of Stoneman Douglas High School as a frightened freshman walks past. The Sun Sentinel reporting that according to that freshman, Cruz telling him, you'd better get out of here, things are going to start getting messy. How many shooters do you have? Two. Just two. Just two. Just two. Just two. Why? He's making me give him all the stuff and that is me. Okay. I was just supposed to watch this. There's no way he's going to let me live. This is Devin Erickson. The serene halls of suburban Colorado High School were forever shattered on May 7th, 2019, when a devastating shooting sent shockwaves through the community. A tragic incident occurred where an 18-year-old named Kendrick Castillo sadly lost his life and eight other individuals were injured. This incident was an assault carried out by two individuals named Devin Erickson, who was 18 at the time, and his accomplice Alec McKinney, who was 16 years old. These two individuals had spent several weeks planning and preparing for their attack. The motivation behind their actions stemmed from the emotional testimonies they had heard from survivors. As a result of their crimes, Judge Teresa Michelle Slade sentenced Erickson to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Golden Cuffs, Alec McKinney explained step by step what happened on May 7, 2019, saying he and Erickson hung out before school to do cocaine and then met up again around lunchtime. McKinney said that's when they decided to go through with their school shooting plan because Erickson's girlfriend was mad at them. This is kind of the pushing point to going through with the plan we had talked about previously. In court, Judge Slade directly addressed Erickson and expressed her belief that no words she could say would have any meaningful impact. Prosecutors argued that Erickson and McKinney deliberately chose a classroom where students were engrossed in watching a movie, taking advantage of the darkness to carry out their attacks with maximum impact. The devastation caused by their actions was immense. The prosecutors further contended that the pair had intended for McKinney to either die by suicide or be killed by his accomplice. Despite the chaotic and dark environment, Kendrick Castillo, along with two other students named Joshua Jones and Brendan Biley, displayed remarkable bravery. They courageously rushed towards Erickson when his gun malfunctioned, successfully halting the massacre. A security officer was then able to apprehend McKinney. During the sentencing hearing, Jim Erickson, the father of Devin Erickson, stood up and addressed the court. He apologized to the community and read out the names of the victims, expressing his remorse to everyone affected by the tragedy. The large number of injured students that were impacted by the, the actions of that day. Um, so I'll start with Lucas, or, I'm sorry, Lucas Albertoni, Stephen Bartoni, Jackson Gregory. Those are people that will, I don't know how they will ever forget what happened to them and they'll have physical and emotional scars for, this, for, the, for the rest of their lives. And we're so sorry for that. Just Even though Erickson's family members spoke in his defense during the trial, Erickson himself chose to remain silent for the majority of the proceedings. When he was finally given a chance to address the court, he opted not to provide any explanation or justification for his actions. However, there are individuals who hold the belief that both the shooters and the classmates who allegedly bullied them should share equal blame for the tragic events. After the legal proceedings, Erickson was ultimately convicted of first-degree murder and an additional 45 charges associated with the attack. While McKinney, being a minor, received a life sentence in prison, there is a possibility that he may become eligible for parole after 20 years. Erickson, on the other hand, displayed no emotional response upon hearing his sentence. Throughout the trial, the only instance where he showed any emotion was when his family testified about their love for him. While bullying may have played a role in the shooting, 
it is important to emphasize that the principles of the legal system must be upheld and respected. The rule of law is considered sacred and must be followed regardless of the underlying reasons behind the tragic event. Breaking news out of Chardon, Ohio. T.J. Lane will spend life in prison. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Leon Bibb, and thanks for joining us. Lane was sentenced for killing three teenagers in Chardon High School last year, and it was a shocking morning in the courtroom. T.J. Lane made quite a statement wearing a T-shirt that had the word killer on it. He also made an obscene gesture to the court. This is T.J. Lane. On the morning of February 27th, a seemingly ordinary day took a dark turn for the students of Chardon High School in Chardon, Ohio. T.J. Lane, a 17-year-old student from Lake Academy, an alternative school, and a former student of Chardon High, carried out a violent attack using a .22 caliber handgun. He targeted his fellow students, firing shots at six individuals. The outcome was devastating. Three students lost their lives, and the remaining victims suffered severe and traumatic injuries. Tragically, one of the victims was left permanently paralyzed. According to witnesses, the shooter had a personal conflict with one of the victims, which seemed to motivate his actions. Before the day came to an end, the police were able to apprehend Lane, and he was promptly arrested. Lane faced multiple charges, including three counts of aggravated murder, two counts of aggravated attempted murder, and one count of felonious assault. I hate you for the pain you have caused, Nick. You chased him down the hall and fired the last bullet that paralyzed him. Why? Why did you do it? Why? Due to his status as a minor, T.J. Lane was initially held at a juvenile facility while the court deliberated on whether he should be tried as a minor or as an adult. Additionally, concerns were raised about his mental capacity to undergo a trial. In May 2012, the court determined that Lane was mentally capable of standing trial. By the end of June, the decision was made to try him as an adult. Throughout the trial proceedings, Lane displayed a demeanor of being unaffected and lacking remorse. He frequently smirked and smiled at the families of his victims, exhibiting an unsettling and unrepentant attitude. I will have to eventually forgive you, otherwise you will haunt me. You will never ever be in my thoughts after this, never. My family will move on, not you. You have ruined your life, not to mention Adam's. He even gave you a ride. Nick even gave you a ride from school. He was thinking about inviting you back to that, to that table because he felt sorry for you. I feel sorry for you. During his sentencing hearing, Lane appeared in court wearing a white shirt that had the word killer written on the front. This disturbing choice of attire was a twisted reference to the clothing he had worn on the day of the school shooting which also bore the word killer. After a long and extensive trial, Lane entered a guilty plea for all the charges against him in March 2013. As a result, he received a sentence of three consecutive life terms without the possibility of parole. Upon hearing his sentence, Lane expressed his anger and disrespect towards the families of the victims by cursing at them and flipping them off in the courtroom. In the following year, Lane managed to escape from Allen Correctional Institution in Lima, Ohio, along with two other inmates. However, their escape was short-lived as they were apprehended the very next day and subsequently transferred to a maximum security prison. Possible shots fired at Stoneman Douglas High School. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is Nicholas Cruz, a young man whose actions had a profound impact on the peaceful afternoon of February 14, 2018, in Parkland, Florida. The tranquility of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School was shattered when Cruz, only 19 years old at the time, initiated a horrifying shooting rampage. This devastating incident resulted in the loss of 17 innocent lives, while 17 others were left wounded. It stands as the deadliest high school shooting in American history, surpassing even the infamous tragedy that occurred at Columbine High School in Colorado back in 1999. And the videos taken before it happened are very disturbing. All right, so here's the plan. I'm gonna go take an Uber in the afternoon before 2.40. From there, I'll go into the to school campus, walk up the stairs, load my bags, 
and get my AR and shoot people down at the main, was it the main courtyard? Await and people will die. Cruz, who was once a student at the school, attempted to escape the scene by blending in with the fleeing students. However, his attempt was short-lived as law enforcement managed to apprehend him within an hour in a nearby town. Further investigations uncovered Cruz's troubled past, marked by disciplinary problems and alarming behavior. The tragic incident sparked intense debates and discussions surrounding gun reform and regulations, with this particular event adding fuel to the ongoing conversations, especially after this video has been released to the public. This morning, chilling images and 911 calls from the Parkland Massacre, painting a timeline of terror. 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz, seen here loading an AR-15 in the hallway of Stoneman Douglas High School as a frightened freshman walks past. The Sun Sentinel reporting that according to that freshman, Cruz telling him, you'd better get out of here, things are going to start getting messy. The persistent efforts of the students yielded results when Governor Rick Scott of Florida signed a bill in March 2018 that imposed additional restrictions on gun regulations. The bill also allowed trained teachers to carry firearms within school premises. The Broward County Sheriff's Office faced severe criticism for its handling of the situation, as it was accused of neglecting warning signs and responding inadequately to the shooting. As a consequence, several officers resigned and Sheriff Scott Israel was eventually removed from his position. In response to the tragedy, the state governor established a panel to investigate the incident thoroughly and propose enhanced security measures for schools statewide. As for Cruz, he faced charges of 17 counts of premeditated first-degree murder and 17 counts of attempted first-degree murder. In October 2021, he pleaded guilty to all charges related to the shooting and expressed remorse for his actions. I am very sorry for what I did and I have to live with it every day and that if I were to get a second chance I would do everything in my power to try to help others and I am doing this for you and I do not care if you do not believe me and I love you and I know you don't believe me but I have to live with this every day and it brings me nightmares and I can't live with myself sometimes. Following a series of setbacks including delays caused by the COVID-19 pandemic a four-month trial commenced in July 2022. At the conclusion of the trial, the jury reached a unanimous decision, recommending the imposition of the death penalty. This recommendation was also supported by the prosecution. Not now the death penalty, then when? Mm -hmm. When? Nevertheless, the jury ultimately opted to recommend a life sentence for Cruz without the chance of parole. In November 2022, he received a sentencing of 34 consecutive life terms without the possibility of parole. Cruz accepted his sentence and expressed remorse for his actions by offering apologies. However, it is important to acknowledge that no matter how genuine these apologies may be, they cannot undo the loss of life caused by his actions. Scars in their bodies and their minds that I can never erase or take back. And most of all, I am sorry to Amy and Emily for taking Sam from them. For this is Caleb Sharp. At the age of 15, he was a student who appeared quiet and spoke softly. Sharp was known for his YouTube channel, where he used the pseudonym Mungo Walker and uploaded videos featuring anti-feminist memes, gun-related content, and simulated shootouts. However, nobody could have foreseen the horror he was about to unleash. On September 13, 2017, Freeman High School in Spokane, Washington, experienced a day that would forever alter the lives of many. Initially, it seemed like any other ordinary day, but it quickly turned into a nightmare when Caleb Sharp, one of the school's own students, entered the premises carrying a large bag filled with weapons and ammunition. Sharp attempted to use his handgun, but it malfunctioned and failed to load. It was at this moment that Sam Strawn, a courageous fellow student, confronted him. Tragically, this act of bravery proved fatal, as Sharp shot and instantly killed Strawn using a revolver. The shooter continued his rampage, injuring three other students before being apprehended by a school janitor who intervened to stop him. New court documents identify 15-year-old Caleb Sharp as the suspect in the deadly school shooting. According to an affidavit filed Thursday, detectives say Sharp wanted to teach everyone a lesson about what happens when you bully others. Sharp's parents told detectives the teenager had written a suicide note over a week ago. According to reports, 
Caleb Sharp was grappling with mental health issues, including depression and untreated ADHD. Prior to the incident, he had written two suicide notes and displayed signs of increasing withdrawal from others. His struggles were exacerbated by emotional abuse from his father and a sense of loneliness. The frequent relocations his family experienced and the departure of his step-siblings from their home had also taken a toll on him. After a lengthy legal process, Sharp received a 40-year prison sentence for his involvement in the shooting. It marked a tragic conclusion to a young life that held great potential. However, it also served as a stark reminder of the importance of mental health support and emotional well-being, particularly for teenagers who are navigating their way through the complexities of life. In its scope, that a child in this day and age who is really crying out for help was allowed to carry out such a heinous crime when the writing was pretty much on the wall for everyone to see, but no one seriously looked. As counsel correctly pointed out, lots of kids have an IEP. Lots of kids are depressed and confused at what is already likely a turbulent time in their lives. Lots of kids have ADHD, but they don't go shoot up a school. During the court proceedings, Sharp remained emotionless when a video depicting his actions was played. Similarly, when his sentence was pronounced, he displayed no visible reaction. However, he did express remorse and offered apologies to the community and his victims. Sharp is slated to serve a minimum of 35 years in prison before becoming eligible for parole. There's their bodies and their minds that I can never erase or take back. And most of all, I am sorry to Amy and Emily for taking Sam from them. This scene was unfolding in Ocala, Florida, a school shooting just four hours from Parkland Stoneman Douglas High. The alleged shooter, a 19-year-old dropout. You know, I'm alone in my house and there's nothing to do, so the depression and that rage came back, so I expressed it in violence in public, which I shouldn't have done. This is Sky Boucher on April 20th, 2018. At the age of 19, Boucher carried out a shooting at Forest High School in Ocala, Florida, resulting in one student being injured. It is significant to note that Boucher's act of violence took place on the 19th anniversary of the tragic Columbine High School massacre in Colorado. Notably, this date coincided with a national student walkout held to protest against gun violence. Shortly after the shooting, Boucher was swiftly apprehended by a school resource officer merely three minutes later. Further investigations unveiled that Boucher had concealed the shotgun within a guitar case when entering the school premises. He then proceeded to the bathroom, where he equipped himself with a tactical vest and gloves before targeting a locked door and discharging the firearm. There's no one to stop me like I thought there would be. And I just got into the bathroom. I took my time putting on my gloves, my, my tactical vest. Boucher approached one of his former teachers and willingly surrendered himself, expressing his desire to be arrested due to his mental illness. In subsequent discussions, Boucher disclosed that he had endured neglect, violence, and struggled with mental health issues since childhood. On that particular day, he acknowledged not feeling well emotionally. His primary intention was to isolate himself from others to prevent causing harm to anyone else. Boucher shared that encountering a student influenced him, leading to a loss of motivation to carry on. However, he admitted to firing at the door as a cry for help, acknowledging that he recognized his need for assistance and feared reaching a breaking point in the future. I'm about to just do something and, you know, I, I spend most of my time in a, in a room alone. So, like, I'm getting this rush. So that's Regrettably, as fate would have it, a 17-year-old student happened to be on the opposite side of the door, and he was struck by the bullet. Fortunately, the injury sustained was not fatal. In light of the incident, Boucher faced several charges, including terrorism, aggravated assault with a firearm, carrying a concealed firearm, and armed trespass on school property. Consequently, he received a prison sentence of 30 years. However, Boucher will be eligible for parole after serving 25 years. Additionally, he was placed under 30 years of probation and was instructed to provide restitution. Only time will reveal the extent to which Boucher's actions will be seen as wise or misguided.